Hey everybody, it's Jonathan and I am back with another video and it has been three months since I have done a reading wrap up, but I've tried to get out a couple of good standalone book reviews, which hopefully um, you have checked out. But now it's time to do my reading wrap up for the months of April, May, and June. And it's not a ton of books, but it is a decent number of books. So if you're interested in seeing what I have been reading during the months of April, May, and June 2021, keep on watching and let's get right into it. Okay, so I've, I've, I feel like my reading has kind of expanded a large amount of genres over the past couple of months. Um, I've kind of picked up, you know, a lot of different things here and there, and I've enjoyed a good chunk of it. There have been some that I didn't really care for, but um, we'll get into those. But um, really to start things off, and I've got some tea, I've got some uh, ginger peach let me calm down for a second. <laughs> but uh, to really start things off, the first book that I read right at the beginning of April, which kind of was a very high note of everything, was Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. And uh, this was my first time reading one of the books in the Brown series. There are three books in the series. There's uh, Take a Hint, Danny Brown, there is Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and then there is Tay. I have an arc of it. Act Your Age, Eve Brown. It's it's on the shelf. It's it's on the second second level of the shelf. But I read it because of the fact that both of the protagonists were people of color. I absolutely loved it. So I'm sure that everybody has kind of read about what Take a Hand Danny Brown, because it, it was a huge booktube thing. Um, the the whole Brown Sisters uh, series has been huge on booktube and I finally got around to reading it, but it basically revolves around um, this college professor, Danny Brown, and she went through like a bad breakup um, and kind of really distances herself from her emotions um and has really no interest in being in a committed relationship and there is a security guard who works at her um who works at the university that she teaches at and they have like this routine in the morning where uh she gets he gets her coffee and you no know, when she picks up her coffee she gets him coffee or something. They have this routine in the morning that, that involves beverages, breakfast things. I think he gives her like a, a granola bar or something, something like that. And so they have this really cute like friendship going on, um, but little does she know he actually really is interested in her and she soon discovers that she is interested in him. After this incident, at the university where they're kind of like caught on video together um he kind of like saves her life uh they end up they end up in a fake relationship and you know it's kind of just like one of those romances where the fake relationship turns into something that is more real and so um i absolutely loved it you know i'm not a huge romance reader but this book was hilarious it was sexy um, it was heartwarming and it was overall just a really great read. Sometimes reading this, Danny Brown definitely felt like me. Uh, Danny really fears putting herself into a relationship out of fear of being hurt, really just placing like her heart in the hands of another due to her past. And Zaf really opens her right up. It takes like a bit of time, it takes a bit of patience and a bit of understanding. Working through um, working through this trauma that Zaf has also endured in his past and Danny dealing with some of her own issues, uh, they end up being right for each other. So they really both end up evolving 
and learning more about themselves and and becoming really more self-actualized people by the end of this book. So I, I really had a great time reading the physical copy while also listening to it on audiobook while I was like cooking and cleaning and you know I just had a great time listening to this and it was a it was a really fun read. So um, it, it lived up to the hype and I was pleasantly surprised about this one. After I read Take a Hint Danny Brown I was kind of in my uh, romance bag. So I ended up reading the sequel-ish to Learned Behaviors by Jace Ellis. Um, Jace Ellis writes these male male romances uh, with Black protagonists. She herself is a queer Black woman and just really writes these very good heartwarming romances. And so I ended up reading Learned Reactions by Jace Ellis. And I read this on Kindle. And so the description of this book reads, and I included this on my uh, Black and Queer uh, book list for 2021. Um, Carlton Monroe is finally getting his groove back after a year playing dad to his nephew and sending him safely off to college. It's back to his bachelor ways. But when his teenage niece shows up on his doorstep looking for a permanent home, his plan comes to a screeching halt. Family is everything and in the eyes of social services, a couple makes a better adoptive family than an overworked bachelor father. A fake relationship with his closest friend is the best way to keep his family together. If things between him and Dion are complicated, well, it only needs to last until the end of the semester. Living with Carlton is a heartbreak waiting to happen. And once the adoption goes through, Dion's out. He's waited two decades for Carlton to realize they're meant for each other and he's done. It's time to make a clean break, but it's hard to think of moving away when keeping up the act includes some very real perks like kissing, cuddling, and sharing a bed. Even the best charades must come to an end though. As the holidays and Dion's departure date looms, the two men must decide whether playing house is enough for them or if there's any chance they could be a family for real. And um, I really enjoyed reading this. And I think that, you know, it definitely had its ups and downs considering the fact that it was, um, it was a novel that was dealing with the whole adoption process. And so Jace Ellis kind of prefaces the, the novel by saying, you know, I understand what the real process of adoption and the real process of adoption is, but I took some creative liberties to make this romance, you know, a little bit faster, a little bit less heavy and um, complicated. And so once you kind of get past how like sort of unrealistic it is, you just kind of enjoy reading about these two and sort of being like, I just want y'all to get together. And it's one of those books that's, you know, it, it's just full of like so much angst and, um, and just, you know, you just enjoy reading it. I, I, I did like this one. I did like this one. If I had to pick, I would say that Learned Behavior is the first one I enjoyed a little bit more. I felt like the characters were a little bit more interesting. These two, um, I kind of wish that there was just a little bit more information, a little bit more of a backstory because like they started out as college roommates and they had slept together in the past um but they kind of like cut things off and so now that sort of whole thing is looming over their friendship and so it's like y'all this is bound to happen and um i would say that that carlton is just extremely stubborn and it was like one of those things where i wanted to throw my ipad at the wall because i was frustrated with how he was acting but it was an overall really cute romance um and i enjoyed it after that, I had gotten into Long Division by Kiese Lehman, which I did a full review on. That is the re-release of Kiese Lehman's 2013 novel, Long Division. And so definitely check out that review. And I would encourage everybody to go pick up that book. And um, yeah. And then following that, I read uh, The Underground Railroad. Uh, by Colson Whitehead, which I also did a reading vlog on, my very first reading vlog ever. So definitely go check out the reading vlog to see my thoughts on Colson Whitehead's novel, which has also been turned into a series, which eventually I will finish watching and do a full review of the actual show. So go check out those videos. I'll make sure to include the links in the description box below. Um, I have not been holding up these books 
<laughs> I'm just realizing that. After finishing the Underground Railroad, I read uh, Ring Shot by P. Jelly Clark. And I had watched a, it was like an uh, Edelweiss convention sort of thing that was online. And P. Jelly Clark was one of the panelists uh, during a discussion on uh, monsters and magic and like creating like these magical worlds and and using monsters in your writing and I had picked up the book and I had like read like the first 20 pages prior to watching him speak and I was just really I really loved everything that he was saying and so ring shout I'll just read uh the description I'll just read the description of ring shout so in America demons wear white hoods in 1915, the birth of a nation cast a spell across America, swelling the clan's ranks and drinking deep from the darkest thoughts of white folk. All across the nation, they ride, spreading fear and violence among the vulnerable. They plan to bring hell to earth, but even Ku Kluxes can die. Standing in their way are Maurice Boudreau and her fellow resistance fighters, a foul mouth sharpshooter and a Harlem hellfighter. Armed with blade, bullet, and bomb, they hunt their hunters and send the clan's demons straight to hell. But something awful is brewing in Macon and the war on hell is about to heat up. Can Maurice stop the clan before it ends the world? And y'all, whew, this book was wild. I almost finished it in one day and you know something's good when you just literally do not want to put it down. And so essentially it's this speculative fiction um, piece about uh, post Birth of a Nation film coming out, these creatures called Ku Kluxes, which are essentially like these monstrous versions of Ku Klux Klan members. And they're not the same, but they sort of like hide in plain sight. And only some people have like this site where you can like see uh, who is actually a Ku Klux versus just like regular old racist white person. And so you have these three black women that are basically hunting Ku Kluxes and studying them to sort of um, understand like what these creatures are. And eventually they realize that the Ku Kluxes are sort of getting stronger and evolving and it's very hard to destroy them. And, you know, uh, the main character, Maurice, uh, is sort of like this this chosen one and she can like summon the sword which she uses to uh defeat Ku Kluxes and her along with her two friends um they are hunting Ku Kluxes and are sort of like trying to solve what is going on and why these creatures are getting stronger and sort of trying to save the world and Y'all, this was a masterpiece. This was a damn masterpiece from the use of like uh, Geechee Gullah culture, le the language, the the food, the um, traditions of the black church, which are uh, rooted in uh, African spirituality and uh, like the use of shouting and songs and it was just, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. The use of folk tales, uh, references to uh, stories like, um, you know, black people having wings, like all guys chilling have wings and um, biblical stories and bro rabbit. And uh, the fact that there was a queer supporting character, a, a openly queer black woman in the story um, and, and her, her queer identity not being hidden. Um, you see you see her having a love interest and and showing affection um, to her partner in the book, which I just thought was beautiful, like absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, just it's black women being at the center of a speculative fiction work and, and then being fully fleshed out individuals, um, characters with backstories, emotions, motivations, all these different things, which is something that I had an issue with in um, the Underground Railroad, the main character in the Underground Railroad. She didn't feel like a fully fleshed out um, main character, but you really get that in Ring Shout. And 
and sort of like the political views and the understanding of, you know, like the, like different perspectives on issues that people were facing at the time uh, concerning racism and how to like deal with certain things. Um, and it, it felt like Ring Shout honestly had this very strong message of uh, completely eradicating and abolishing white supremacist structures. And you know, that you can't sort of like, that it's not, it's not doing anything to sort of like sort of replicating this oppression just with a black face, which you'll understand if you read this book and sort of get to like why Maurice is like this chosen one and what what exactly um, why she's sort of like the focus of this novel. P. Jelly Clark, after watching an interview with him, understanding, you know, just how just understanding his views and why he writes things a certain way and him sort of like making sure that his writing is anti-imperialist and you know anti-capitalist and um and you know anti-racist and i just would encourage everybody to read ring shout you know i would definitely recommend it to everybody um i don't think that it got a lot of the the a lot of the press and um, praise that it really deserved because it kind of came out at the end of 2020. So, you know, like mid pandemic, but it's definitely, I definitely would encourage everybody to hype this book up and like recommend it for people to read um, because, you know, we can't just focus on a couple of books by black authors and just like ignore the rest. And so I definitely would encourage everybody to pick up Ring Shout. This was a 10 out of 10 for me. Um, in terms of nonfiction, so uh, in nonfiction, I read uh, Nothing Personal by James Baldwin, which is um, it's the first time that this essay by James Baldwin has been published standalone. And I did a full review of Nothing Personal by James Baldwin on my channel. So definitely go check that out. I'll include the link to that video in the description box below also. I think after, it was after I read Nothing Personal, I read Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Davis. And I definitely have been on a roll trying to make sure that I'm reading Angela Davis's work. I read um, Our Prisons Are Obsolete earlier this year. Um, I had read, I read Women Racing Class a while back and I loved just watching Angela Davis speak on uh like watching videos of her speaking on youtube you know whenever she goes to like colleges and universities and talks or does interviews um because she she is you know i just love angela davis freedom is a constant struggle um is a collection of essays um really talking about movements um you know free palestine the the, the fight to free palestine the fight uh you know, the protests in Ferguson and, you know, the aftermath of everything that happened in Ferguson and just the rise of um, the Black Lives Matter movement and all these different things. And so um, Angela Davis really always just lays out um, abolition and, and the intersections of American struggles with global liberation so plainly in this book. She really talks about how we cannot separate what has happened in Minneapolis, in Columbus, in St. Louis and Chicago and Baltimore and all these different places um, from the genocide that the Palestinians are facing and the, the fights for liberation across the continent uh, of Africa. And, you know, really being mindful of the role of race, gender and class um, as we fight for those that are most vulnerable. And it's so important, I think, that as we're continuing, as people are continuing to read more and, you know, are, are working on um, involving themselves in different freedom movements and freedom struggles, just understanding that you cannot just like fight for one thing without fighting for the other. You cannot um, say that you stand with Black Lives Matter, but you aren't fighting for the rights of Black trans women and, and Black queer folks. Um, you can't say that you believe in Black Lives Matter and you're completely ignoring the struggles of Palestinians. Um, you cannot say that you're against uh, police brutality, um, but then completely ignore 
um, how Angela Davis, and she brings this up, and it's, it, it really blew my mind that some of the police trainings across the United States, um, they use the same techniques, brutal techniques and strategies that are used in, that are used in um, brutalizing Palestinians and they're used by Israeli forces. And, you know, that's what is training are the police in the United States. And, um, and so you can't separate, separate those things. We can't separate the fight for equity and education um, with abolishing prisons and, and policing as we know it. We cannot rally against sexual violence and, and intimate partner violence without discussing the way that prisons reenact that same violence, without talking about policing and the carceral state. She really profoundly states that our histories never unfold in isolation, which is connecting to the Black feminist thought of learning your sister's stories. And, and our histories are interconnected and our struggles are intertwined. And, and if we truly want to seek liberation, we must fight for the freedom of all oppressed people. And so I think that she really just lays it out perfectly and freedom is a constant struggle. And you sort of leave reading this book with being like, there's so much work to be done. And so I definitely would encourage everybody to read that. So uh, yeah, freedom is a constant struggle. Definitely read. Um, so I'm definitely going to do a, a separate video where I talk about the three YA middle grade books that I read, um, just so that this video isn't super, super long. Um, but yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed seeing what I have read over these past couple of months. And I'm definitely doing better. I'm reading a lot more. So July wrap up should be a little bit better. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you have been reading. Um, have you read any of these books? Did you enjoy them? Did you not enjoy them? Do you have questions? Um, just talk about it in the comments below. And I will see all of you back here in the next video, which will be uh, the part two to this, which will be the Y middle grade books that I have read. So hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you all in the next one. And always remember that you are loved.